Next up, Q2 for U2. So how Q2 works is when it's installed, say you're uh, wanting to kind of collect videos, right? You're trying to get a project ready for kids, you need multiple videos. So you're over and you're going to, say we're doing Everest, like we're, we're studying Everest. And so we want to get as many videos about Everest as possible. So you start off and you say, okay, I'm going to watch, let's see, I want to watch this video about Everest. So I want to watch this video. And if you notice when you're watching a YouTube video, over here on the right, you have the up next. So Google decides what video is going to kind of play next. Well, with YouTube, you can type in like another video you want to search for. So like, Ever Summit. And when you hit enter, you get search results in the right side of the bar. And so now you can go in and say like, oh, Ever Stay Summit, let's add that to the queue. And now it reorders what videos are gonna play next. And I can move them up and down. So I can say, actually, I want this one at the top. And then it moves that video to the top. So you kind of create a little custom playlist for yourself. And it allows you to watch this video while continuing to do research and search for other videos within YouTube. So YouTube, great extension. Watch Next is very similar. So what Watch Next does, if you take a look up here, there's this little green uh, kind of play, a circle with a play button on it. This is what the Watch Next extension. And when you're searching YouTube videos, so say we want to do something about tornadoes. So when you search for tornadoes, and you hover over a video, you'll see that little green circle with a plus on it. And when I click that plus button, I'm gonna add a couple more here, let's add this one. If I go to my Watch Next extension and click on it, it saves all those videos in a little playlist. So say you're at home, you're looking for videos to show in class the next day, you can actually create your own little playlist time, and then when you get to school, you just come in here and you click that first video, the little play button, and it automatically starts your playlist. And it will just play those videos automatically. So it's just an easy way to remember, kind of create your own custom playlist of YouTube videos. All right. Stop autoplay. How many of you have been in a, a PD or something and you open a video and it immediately starts playing and everyone can hear the video that you're watching? Well, that's because you didn't have stop autoplay for YouTube itself. Stop autoplay is very basic. I'm not even going to demo it. But essentially, when you click on a YouTube video, it will autoplay. Like, it just waits until you click play. So it'll load and do everything it needs to in the background, but it'll wait. So you don't have any more embarrassing, my speakers weren't turned off, and I just played a loud video in front of everybody. And maybe I'm not paying attention. All right. Hover cards. This one's really interesting. So if you're doing research, say you go to Google and you say, Battle of the Alamo videos. Any YouTube video, and this also works, by the way, for Instagram um, and Reddit and other programs, but hover cards, if I see this video and I go, oh, this is a YouTube video, and I just hover my mouse over it, it actually loads the video. I don't have to actually click on the link. It just loads the video and starts playing it, and it stays muted until I move my mouse over it. And then I can just watch a little preview, or I can click through it and say, wait, is this the, really the video I want? Or when I move my mouse off of it, it just disappears, and I can go to the next video and watch that. So it's just a little bit of productivity, save you some time. Search for YouTube. So you're doing research, you're working on a project, or you're trying to get lesson plans ready, but you don't want to have multiple tabs open. So search for YouTube is an extension. It gets installed up here. You click search for YouTube. And you can literally search right there any uh, YouTube video. So, I do space, right? Here's all these videos. So I can instantly share those to Twitter or Facebook if I wanted to. Or I can copy those hyperlinks and put them right into my doc. Or if I just want to watch it, I can click on it and it will open a new tab and allow me to start watching that video without actually going to YouTube first. So it's just like a little shortcut kind of lets you get in there a little bit sooner. All right. Article. So, article is kind of like a all-in-one inclusive tool. So, in this one, article runs in the background. 
to take a look down here. It's installed some different options and features. One of my favorites, so you'll see like there's pop-out video, full browser, cinema mode, um, open thumbnail, repeat, but screenshot is really cool because a lot of times in a video, like even if kids are watching it, they might want to capture a screenshot of a certain part of the video. So what you can do is you can get to that part of the video and then you can pause it and you go down and you click the uh, screenshot button. And it opens a little screenshot. It just takes a picture of the video right there. And then I can go down and right click that and I can copy that image and copy it into one of my presentations, copy it into a doc or kids can copy it into their presentation. Or I can save it as an image and just save it to my desktop. Maybe it's a cool desktop background. I don't know where you want to put it on your website. You can do all that with the uh, extension, the particle for YouTube. All right, I'm moving a little bit out of extensions because we're getting close to wrapping this up. Keepvid.com. Keepvid.com is one of my favorite YouTube sites because you could be at ISTE and you could have no internet. So I actually keep it at a lot of these videos where it downloads it to your computer. So you take the YouTube URL, go to keepvid.com, punch it in here, and you can download it as a video file to your computer. So this is really helpful if you have YouTube blocked at your school. If you go home and you download the video on your computer and then you can come back and show it in class. Or again, if there's uh, backup plans for internet being down or Wi-Fi. It's also really great for getting music. So it actually you can download MP3 files and stuff as well. So if there's a cool video that's awesome music on it but you can't uh, buy it, go to keep it and you can download it. It's super awesome. So the last thing I'm going to show you that I have on that slide there is just a couple that aren't extensions but are built into YouTube. And so what you'll see in a lot of um, videos is some of the basics. So like subtitles. And I love using the subtitles. Not every video has subtitles, but I have a lot of second language learners. And so a lot of videos actually have Spanish subtitles. So you can use that in your classroom to support kids who may not be able to understand what the audio exactly is. Also, they can go to settings, and now if you notice, you can change the speed. So in the settings, you can make it actually go a little slower, which is great for kids who have uh, hearing disabilities or other uh, special needs. They can actually slow it down and make it go a little slower and a little more clear for them so it's easier to understand. Or I have some kids who are like super off the wall and they want it really fast, so they can choose. They can change the speed themselves. The other thing you can do is you can change the quality. So a lot of times, like a video like may not be loading. So if you change it to just a little bit lower resolution, it'll actually uh, speed it up. The video is easier to load and you can access it like more quickly. So if you're in class and it's like, wow, this video is taking forever to load, just jump into the settings and change the quality to a lower um, pixel, uh, lower DPI, and then the video will actually probably play and it will load more quickly. So if you're having problems loading a video, try to um, up and down a little bit. Of course, don't forget cinema mode. That's this little rectangle here. Cinema mode turns it into like a large screen up at the top, so it kind of takes away those videos from the side, some of those distractions. And then, of course, you can always make it go full screen mode again. Thank you. My name is Dan Sharp. If you want to get these resources, remember it's bit.ly slash slam YouTube for YouTube extension resources. Thank you. Um, I think you guys can do a little bit better than that. A little bit louder. This is the Dan Sharp. Okay, we have some giveaways. If you have not yet gotten one of these blue tickets, just put your hand up and someone will come around and give you a blue ticket. What do we got today? Oh my gosh, so much great stuff. We got one, Michelle. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. So I plug it up and it wasn't even plugged in. I'd like to introduce you to our official bucket holder. This is Sergio Villegas, and he specifically wore red so he would be matching today, so that we thank him for as well. Okay, are we ready? First, 
surprise. We are giving away um, Dan, so hold up that t-shirt, will you? Uh, we're very thankful to be working with a number of partners, many of them that are here on the vendor floor. One of them is We Video. We Video is just a couple um, aisles down. They are running sessions all day as well. But this is a We Video t-shirt. Goes to. All right, here. <laughs> And next up, also one of our partners, that blue, this is Max Cases. So Max Cases is right behind us here. Max Cases has all sorts of cases for your devices. Um, they're going to give you a coupon code to purchase any one of their cases on Amazon. I believe it. <laughs> yes, they are. You go and see Max Cases. I think it's a 50% off. Talk to them. Sweet talk them. Maybe the end. Get the coupon code from those guys. Me. Winner of Max Cases 877. It's always out of the bag. Max Cases. All right. Another one of our partners. How many of you already know about Pear Deck? Oh, yeah. Pear Deck. If you do not know about Pear Deck, they're just over there behind SketchUp. Um, amazing, amazing program. So, this is a golden ticket for your subscription of Pear Deck. And that goes to. Ta -da. Eight, two, five. Hey. Perfect. We are now giving away Google Cardboard. Google, also, we are a partner for Google for Education. We love everything they do. Um, those that don't know about Cardboard, virtual reality viewer, you open that up, put your phone in, takes you anywhere in the world to eight, two, eight. Right here. We're going to give away another Google Cardboard. The next Google Cardboard. And I think we need to make a little bit more noise when, when <laughs> this person wins the shoot, right? Like, this is pretty huge. Like, really. We clap for our friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the We got a. Okay, winner of Google Cardboard is 826. Yay! <laughs> and we have a couple of books to give away. We have. Uh, is this the Hyperdocs handbook? Is Lisa? Oh, Lisa's not around. She's. Is she? Oh, Lisa Heifel is here. So I suspect we could even get her to sign this book. Um, you know what? Maybe we should give that one we last. That's like. We don't have anyone to sign the iPad book. Dan could sign the iPad book for you. All right, iPads. Uh, eight five nine. Ooh, eight, five, nine. And eight, two, four. Yes. Nice. <laughs> All right, now this is Hype Dots Handbook. No, no, do we have one that's blank? Uh, Are we ready? Hype Dots Handbook goes to last three digits, eight, two, zero. Just gotta get some paint on it. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah. I was. Oh, oh my Spanish is a big thing. Oh, do you want to spy with me? Oh, oh, with me? oh look at this. She won yesterday and has said that we can draw another name. Isn't that nice? Good to meet you. I'm going up in just a second. We have another part of my Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, <laughs> this is great. Hyperdox. Handbook. Uh, Eight. Three. Six. Oh, my God. Oh, that's no, 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 I want you all to know, if you notice this, we've got a computer over here on the side. We're live streaming all of these events today. So if you saw something here and you want to go back to it, any of the resources that Dan shared, you'll be able to see all of that on YouTube. It's going to be recorded for you. Um, and then you can also watch the rest of today live. Um, go to EdTech Team and YouTube. Uh, next up. We have EdTech Team founder and CEO Mark Wagner is coming up here next. Um, you do not want to miss this session. He's going to get set up here, um, so stick around.
Justin recommended Special bonus interview, everyone, with uh, Michael Walker. Oh, hi. Hi, bye. There you go. She's starting. So, so, for those of you that aren't, uh, it's a team with a, uh, a global network of education technology. It's a team of former teachers. And uh, we, we've all, uh, some of us have leadership in schools and districts, too. But we've, uh, we've all come together essentially to uh, impact schools around the world, primarily through providing face to face professional development. So, we're known for our, our conference style summits. Uh, and we do uh, certification workshops for Google. We're about 150 certifications in here. Uh, and on the long tail, I just realized that we've got about 500 of these on the calendar for 2017. So the core of what we do is we CD, but we've got online courses now. Uh, so we have a test division that uh, publishes books, so we've got about 20 books released in our catalog. Uh, the number of them are in uh, cabinet over here because it's so uh, and then we got fire time with uh, all of our services. We have the schedule in the back of the schedule, which tells you a little bit about our uh, about our team and what we do. Uh, but ultimately, you know, if you guys have any professional development needs at your school, uh, or if you have any school change initiatives underway, uh, that's something that we can help with. And uh, what we're doing here today is essentially a uh, a summit on the on the conference room floor. So we're just uh, giving our, our favorite sessions, sort of abbreviated uh, best bang for your buck versions of them. And um, you know, hopefully you guys like what you see. Share with your share with your colleagues, and um, let us know if you would be able to. 
I think it's more or less. Uh, my stars kind of also put out so like cards. Uh, interested in that? But I uh, we started the company about eleven years ago, and you now it's uh, it's been such an adventure. And, uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm privileged to be able to work with the people I work with. Like anybody you see standing around in that t shirts. Uh, they're my friends. Yeah, Michael. Awesome. awesome. The best part is when people come to our party, we make new friends. So, uh, good to have you guys here. Good to have you guys All right, I'm going to uh, right, switch back here. Jump, jump right in. in. Jump right in. If I am so lucky. All right. Come on, Internet. It's all right, I guess it might be if we, if we fail out. In fact, I might just play. You guys want to see something geeky? I'll skip you to Cicelo right now. I'm running a terminal on my Chromebook and uh, side by side with Chrome OS and running Linux. Because it'll give me my screen. Searching, searching, come on, source. This is the dangerous way to get you. There we go. Give me a moment to adjust my uh, display settings. That's my wife, Eva, on a walk in Irvine. You think it's beautiful there? All right, turn on mirroring. Awesome. So, what I've done is uh, export my uh, slide deck as a PDF, which is not terribly geeky. And we're going to view it as a presentation. Can you do that? Save yourself some uh, headaches if you're uh, having to do offline presentations. So, uh, my name is Mark Wagner. Uh, thank you, Michelle, for the introduction earlier. But I'm a former high school English teacher, and my people uh, in the booth right now. There we are, right now. Um, and uh, I, I got the opportunity like 17 years ago now to be the tech coordinator at my high school. And um, that led to a position at the, the district and later at the Orange County Department of Ed in California. But 11 years ago, uh, I left my, my county office job and uh, discarded my suit and, and uh, started Ed Tech Team. So uh, really, really excited to be here with you guys today and, and trying to bring some, um, normally in my sessions, trying to bring uh, you know, best tips, tricks, et cetera, to, to the table to share with you guys. But having been to the schools that we've been around the, around the globe and, and uh, seen some of the inspiring things that we've seen, I wanted to bring some of that back to you now. Uh, and I'll explain the title of the session a little bit more, but this may be a little bit different from the, the other tips and tricks uh, kind of sessions that we packed into the, uh, to the booth today. But uh, hopefully uh, you guys can leave with something that will help you when you take take all of this new learning at ISTE and take it back to your, your schools and your colleagues and your students uh, to, to be the boon bringer when you, when you come back down the mountain, if you will. Um, briefly, EdTech Team is, of course, a, a partner with Google for Education. Uh, we're also an Apple professional learning provider, uh, so we can help you guys with, with either of those. And as I was mentioning uh, off the top of my head earlier, we're, we're best known for our summits around the globe. So uh, one of the things we'll be giving away later, I think, is a uh, ticket to the summit closest to you. So you can you can jump online and find the one closest to you and get a ticket to the summit. Uh, if you're interested in the resources for this uh, or my productivity session earlier, uh, this is the short link. So Wendy, that's your short link for your, your online crew. We're streaming these sessions today, too. So. Hey, everybody. Uh, edtech.team slash Isti Wagner. For the geeky folks, this is a custom bit.ly link. You've seen the bit.ly. So edtech.team slash Isti Wagner. It is case sensitive, so the Isti is capitalized. Wagner's number. Now, I can put this back up again, but since you're taking pictures of it, I'll leave it. Awesome. All right, uh, this is a hastily added low quality graphic, but I'm also going to give away a rocket book at the end of the, the session. So uh, if you guys haven't heard of these, these are pretty cool. You write in them. Uh, they actually have erasable pens. They're pretty fantastic. But you write in the rocket book, uh, then you scan it with their app. It loads it directly into the, the folder you tell it to in Google Drive, uh, and then you can erase the page. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. So I'm going to give away uh, two of those at the end of the session. And, and they're mildly uh, relevant because what we're going to be talking about today is inspiration. Uh, and particularly inspiration for innovation. Uh, many of the people you see standing around you with high tech team shoe shirts and others are, are Google certified innovators. Uh, we've been involved with that program for the last 10 and a half years of its existence. Uh, and so we, we talk a lot about how do we get educators to be more innovative and how do we inspire them to take risks uh, in their classrooms and in their schools and inspire them to try to make an impact bigger than they might have thought possible uh, in their role as a teacher. So the, the program I'm referring to is the Google Certified Innovator Program. 
Uh, if you're not familiar, there's four levels of certification. Uh, level one is essentially how to use uh, the G Suite's uh, tools. Level two is more uh, pedagogy focused, uh, classroom focused, like how to use it as a teacher. Uh, there's a certified trainer level where you actually have to apply to get in. Uh, and then the final level is uh, actually applying to the Innovator Academy. You go spend uh, some like a few days in the Google offices and sort of uh, become immersed in their culture, and you leave with a year of support to launch something new. So that's kind of awesome. Uh, and we're, we're really excited. We relaunched the program last year. Um, you guys can go to the, the Google for Education Training Center and uh, learn all about those programs. You can actually take the tests for level one and two yourself uh, and apply for the certified trainer and certified innovator. Now, we just had our 10 year anniversary. I, I was just mentioning that to you guys. Uh, this is Chris Walsh, whose idea it actually was way back in 2006. And uh, his, his colleague, er Allison uh, Merrick, who helped put on some of the early ones. Uh, so we, we got together in several cities around the world and had the 10 year anniversary back in, uh, back in November. Uh, Chris Bell was there with the 10 year balloons too. But, but uh, not, not long after that, we actually, uh, well, if, if, let me pause for a minute. I'll give you a little bit of history. It's, it's starting to feel like a lot of history. We give you a little bit of the history of what what you know brought me here and brought the team together and, uh, and brings us to the Innovator Academy. But what brings you guys here today to ISTE? Uh, and it's a small crowd. I just love to hear from a couple of volunteers. Like, what, what brings you guys to ISTE today? What are you what are you looking for? Yeah, so things you can share with your faculty and staff to spark innovation. Others. Oh yeah, what's that? Which one? Okay, instructional coach, and they added the tech part to my job, so I'm trying to learn new things to add to my position. What an exciting place to be! So she's an instructional coach, and I just added technology to her job. So now you're a tech coach, right? There's a few of those sitting around you. I think. Right, you know, sure, yeah. So you, you want you want to beat the kids to the first yeah. is what you Okay, that's good. So yeah, hopefully you're gonna go you need to go spend some time in the VR booths and yeah. Right, yeah. That's a, there's like some gloves that have tension in them so that you can feel what you're touching. It's gnarly stuff on the floor today. But um, it's fun to hear a little bit of what you guys are, are, are here for and, and I hope that we can generalize some of that to the others. Like you're looking for things that you can take back to your school or to your district. So generally speaking, people who decide to spend their week in San Antonio in, in uh, uh, the end of June are, are probably pretty dedicated to uh, make a change in their schools. So uh, uh, that or margaritas. Um, so if, if you're like me, you probably share this problem. Anybody spend too much time in their email inbox? Maybe it's kind of tough to keep up with that email when you're uh, doing something else from 8 to 3 most days, right? So I often find myself writing emails like this where I'm apologizing, apologizing for delayed, uh, delayed replies. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm giving people some of what they need, but I often feel like I'm not giving everything that ought to be given at that time. And I've developed a sort of sign-off uh, that people make fun of me for now, but, uh, but I'll end my messages with more soon. Da, da, da. It's like, I know this is incomplete. There's more coming. No, more soon. Uh, and, and over the years, I've discovered other more sooners who will reply and say more soon. But, um, but uh, the funny story about this: How many of you saw Jenny Kino this morning? Oh, only a few of you. Jenny, was, by the way, best Kino ever, uh, literally. But um, Jenny, uh, Jenny's a friend, and so I was extra excited to see her up on stage today. But um, Jenny told me the first time I emailed her and said more soon, she thought I meant like not soon, more soon, like Jenny. <laughs> I don't just want this quickly, I want it more quickly, right? So she, she, she felt some uh, psychological weight, I think, we receiving my emails for a couple of years where it was for me, the source was guilt. I'm like, no, this, I know this isn't everything you need, Jenny, but, but more soon. So um, recently we've been we've been really lucky to, to be in a position to, uh, to be able to hire Jenny. So she starts to time with us on Saturday, which is fantastic. Yeah. She's been part of the family for years, but we're, we're super excited about it. But Jenny sent me this, uh, sorry, this simple message when she accepted the job. <laughs> and uh, and we, had this, we had this really great riff, uh, you know, afterward about, oh, more now, that's so, that's so much better than the more soon. Like, more soon is driven by guilt, right? Uh, and and when you when, and I happen to be, and I think a lot of my friends who have taken strength finder test would be like, we're all kind of future focused. You know, and it's like we're, we're always working for that future that's not here. Frankly, we'll never be here, right? Like schools are never going to be what people at ISTE imagine them to be. Uh, and, and there's certainly people who are sort of uh, stuck in the past, right? But what if we, we thought about more now as like less yesterday, less tomorrow for us future focused people and, and more now, right? And it really equates to like less worrying, more now. Like let's just deal with where we're at and, and less dreaming. 
<laughs> or now. And then I and it's coming from a dreamer, right? Like, what can we do today to make make an impact in our schools? Uh, but also from a sort of mindfulness perspective, uh, more now is, is a much better uh, sort of life philosophy than my, my email sign off of more soon, right? So that, that's uh, from where this session gets its, its title, is more now. So we found ourselves in April uh, running the Google uh, Innovator Academy in, in London. Uh, and so in, in keeping with the more now philosophy and, and wanting to be sort of present with uh, uh, these educators who were inducting into the community in London a couple of, uh, couple of months ago, uh, I, I had the opportunity to speak just a few moments uh, at, the, at the beginning of the event. Uh, and, and I focused on this idea. Does anybody happen to know what this symbol is? Oh, you do. <laughs> uh, so the only other one who's seen any of this presentation. Uh, well, this happens to be a symbol that, uh, if we, by the way, if we go to Google to find out, if you do like a similar image search, you're going to come up with this. But this is a, the symbol for Awe, which is a, a Welsh word for inspiration, right? Uh, or, or perhaps uh, a muse, right? Uh, and the, the idea in, in the British Isles is that those those moments when you're, you're uh, you know, you might call it the flow state, or when you're, you're hit with inspiration, uh, or an innovative new idea that the, the all when is upon you is the way they see, say it, right? So the uh, the uh, the athlete or the like the uh, or the hockey player. Sometimes I feel like the all when is upon me. Like I, I just know where to go, and then you know, I know I know we're going to score, right? And and uh, sometimes as uh, you know, in old Welsh stories, they, they talk about the, uh, the well. First of all, the poet the poet's all when can be upon you, or the warrior's all when can be upon you. So. Are there times when you feel like the teacher's all one upon you? Like when you are fully 100% in the moment? These are sort of the like dance puppets moments that Jenny was talking about too. But like when you, you, you see what has to be done in that moment and you're able to sort of step into that role. So that, that's, a, that's a concept that's, that's interested me for, for years. Um, and looking at that, I looked for inspiration again uh, from, from the Welsh and, and the Celts who, who uh, occupied those islands you know, in the ages past. And they, they passed on a lot of their, their pre-written tradition uh, from triads. So some of them are more, more uh, wordy than this, but this is a nice simple one. Uh, I would look for one about inspiration. When the soul is inspired, it inherits three gifts, genius, love, and memory. Uh, and in some translations, it's primitive genius, primitive love, and primitive memory. You're sort of getting out of your cerebral cortex and into wherever Awen comes from back here, right? Uh, and, and finding those moments and, and knowing to act on them, even when we've got 20 years of education as, as teachers behind us, uh, is an important part of, of the job and the work that we do. So, uh, in, in a moment here, I'm going to ask you guys to, uh, to do an activity, and you guys are going to write your own triad. So, what are three things that are key to inspiration? So, you're going to write it like a triad. Three things key to inspiration are blank, blank, and blank. Uh, if if you've got what you think is a good internet connection, if you go to edtech.team slash triad, again, it's, it's uh, text sensitive, you're going to find a, uh, a slide that I've set up for you where you can actually just edit the slide. Uh, and then a couple of pro tips here. When you edit the slide in Google Slides, you can just do file download as JPEG. And now you've got a nice slide that you can throw up on social media uh, and share your wisdom with everybody. So when we did this in London with Jay, uh, everybody, I, I was, my mind was blown. Everybody wrote these really, really great triads about the, the keys to inspiration and then uh, copied the slide and downloaded it as a JPEG, uploaded it to Twitter and so forth. So um, those of you who want to try that out, it's edtech.team slash triad. Again, it's case sensitive. Um, you can find a slide that you can copy. I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work mobile, but you can try it. And if not, hopefully you all have the bingo card, which is the only handout we have that's blank on the back. <laughs> So you can write your triads by hand with a pen if you, if you need to, because I know the internet's a little bit of a challenge here. But for this sort of thing, analog is actually uh, not a bad way to do this, which is one of the reasons I'm giving away the rocket book at the end of the session, because uh, sometimes you just want to capture your inspiration analog. Uh, but then, of course, we still want everything to be searchable and copyable and not perishable, so we'll scan things up into Google Drive. So while you're working on that, I'm going to give you time to work. You can write on your, uh, on your uh, bingo card or if you can copy the slide, you can do that. Uh, while you're doing that, I want to share a few other inspiring quotes from you that, that might be relevant. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn to the, the Google uh, founders, Sergey, Larry and Sergey, Sergey Brandon and Larry Page. Sergey says, any conversation I have about innovation starts with the ultimate goal. And uh, if you are, you know, 
considering what you want to take back to your teachers, how you want to inspire them to, to innovate in the classroom. You know, consider what's your ultimate goal, because it's probably not use Chromebooks, right? Uh, it's probably not use iPads or whatever it is, or, or even VR gloves. Uh, but what do, you, what do you want the kids to be doing? What do you want them to be learning? And perhaps more important than what do you want them to learn, what do they want to learn? Right? Or what experience do you want them to have? Uh, as an aside, I think the most important question we can ask a kid is, what do you want to learn? Because that, you're going to unlock their love of learning, uh, guaranteed, for, for any kid. Uh, I could talk to you more and more about the genius hour and 20% time and senior project, uh, but I've seen it done all the way from kindergarten, which my wife teaches, all the way to my seniors. Uh, asking kids that question opens a lot of doors. But Sergey also says, solving big problems is easier than solving little ones. Uh, and oftentimes when we're helping the innovators come up with their project ideas for the year, or simply helping teachers uh, affect change in their school, we keep coming back to this. Whatever you're thinking, think bigger. It's almost easier the, bi the bigger you think because it clarifies what you need to do and you think start thinking outside the box. And instead of iterating on something, now you can make a, a, a significant pivot in the way that you're, you're practicing at your school. Uh, for another nugget from uh, from Google, if, if you think of it this way, they're uh, Google X or the X Lab, or they're just simply X now in Alphabet. Uh, they're the people that bring you the self-driving car. And the, back in the day, Google Glass, and they have uh, they put um, wind turbines up in the stratosphere, and they put balloons in the stratosphere to give people internet access. Uh, these folks say, uh, you know, if you want to you want to make a car that goes 50 miles to a gallon, you can iterate on existing cars, right? You want to get that 500 miles to the ground, you have to start over. You have to think bigger. And I think we're in a position where sometimes we need to think bigger about schools and, and uh, be willing to start over. So Larry, uh, his co-founder, says, it, it seems like the world is falling apart quite a bit from time to time. Sometimes the hotel next door is on fire. But in all actuality, it's a great point in your life to get a little crazy. Follow your curiosity and be ambitious with it. Don't abandon your dreams. The world needs you. Uh, and they have another saying, I'm going to share with you a, a, an article in a few minutes that covers some of Google's culture around innovation. But they have a saying that says, essentially, believe in your dreams. So think bigger, believe in your dreams. Sergey uh, tells a story about where he goes for inspiration. Uh, and I don't know if any of you know Snow Crash, that Neil Stevenson novel. Well, that, was, that, that almost single-handedly made up virtual reality, and, and, uh, or redefined virtual reality back in 92. But... Um, if you've read any of his novels since, too, these all cover history, linguistics, anthropology, archaeology, religion, computer science, you name it. Uh, and Ser one of Sergei's uh, uh, principles that he, he'll infuse us throughout the company is, is look everywhere for inspiration, right? So it might be ancient Celtic poetry uh, when, you're at, when you're at a technology conference, but uh, it might be some you know, passions your kids are bringing into the classroom. It might be expertise that your colleagues have. Uh, you know, everything from athletics to anything up here, right, could be an inspiration. It could spark a kid's love of learning. Uh, Larry also says um, that Steve Jobs' focus on the user uh, has been inspirational to him. And you'll know if you if you look at Google's corporate website, they have a, a list. They say 10 things that they believe to be true. And one of the top ones is focus on the user and all else will follow. Uh, and as educators, if we, of course, focus on the student, uh, all else will follow. And we, we here, of course, have a focus on student agency, which I'll talk a little bit more about. But Sergey also says, we do lots of stuff. The only way you're going to have success is to have lots of failures first. Uh, we had a Googler from the X come uh, give a keynote at one of our events a couple summers ago, and uh, he said his job was to fail fast. Rich Duvall, he's the guy that came up with the Project Loon Balloons in the air. Uh, his job is to fail fast. And so he had to come up with uh, prototypes of these balloons and as quickly as he could, he had to get them to fail so that he could test his theories and learn what the pain points were and, and iterate on his design. So uh, Sylvia Duckworth did this sketch of Susan Wojcicki's article on the eight pillars of Google innovation. And you'll see a lot that uh, resonate with educators, right? Have a mission that matters. We've got that. Think big, but start small. Even if you've got these big ideas, start with your classroom. What can you implement today, right? Uh, and you'll see a lot of the ones we took, talked about. Look for ideas everywhere. Uh, believe the impossible. Never fail to fail. Uh, and this is a this is a graphic we keep coming back to even in our own work. So wanted to be able to share that here and also a shout out to uh, to Sylvia and Susan for that matter. So uh, the the challenge here was to write your own triad on inspiration. And I see that a few of you at least have been writing on the uh, on the bingo cards. And some of you had your computers out. Hopefully you were able to successfully copy the slide. Um, what I'd love to do is just hear a couple of uh, couple of uh, triads. Who, who, who's willing to share? 
Online, we have desire, commitment, and time. Desire, and Paula. Time. Thanks, Paula. Good. Yes. Passion. Passion, fearlessness, and innovation. It's funny because I think these, these tell such a story about each person who writes them, too, right? Others. I saw, yeah. What do you got? Passion, collaboration, I believe. So it's collaboration. I didn't really hit on collaboration, but that's an important one, right? Awesome. I guess that's part of look for ideas everywhere, right? Yeah. Awesome. From each other. Any others? Did, yeah, I saw you were right on there. Dream, courage, and build on failure. I love it. So I, uh, I, I've got just a couple minutes. I, or no, I don't actually do I. Uh, I want to say just a couple of final words because when you guys come home from ISTE, you are truly going to be coming down the mountain and, uh, and, and bringing this wisdom back to your, your village. You guys will be the boon bringers. Um, and, and when you return from all of this craziness, you're going to have to somehow deliver something that's useful to your colleagues and, and to your teachers. Uh, and I'm going to leave you with a framework that, that really works well for us. And, and that is when you're doing, when you're undergoing any school change, change in one of these areas is never enough. And you really need to be addressing all six before you're going to move the needle, right? So when we talk about courageous leadership, speaking of <laughs> having courage, right, uh, that's not enough if you're not turning around and empowering your teachers, right? Uh, similarly, all of that's for nothing if you're not focusing on student agency. Uh, and that's really the focus of all of this. The rest of this, particularly inspiring spaces and uh, robust infrastructure, that's about creating a place and an experience for your kids to, to have agency. But if all your conversations go right here, and you're arguing about iPads or Chromebooks or whatever, uh, then you're, you're missing you're missing the student agency focus. You're missing uh, you're almost certainly not going to have your leaders on board and so forth. Uh, and you're not even thinking about the spaces because what happens if you put a new Chromebook on every kid's desk but they set it sit in rows listening to a lecture? You're going to get what you always got, right? So what are you going to do to make the space reflect the culture and pedagogy you want in your schools? Uh, then you can talk about infrastructure and, and as, as a support element, of course, engaging the community as well. So I hope you guys will stay connected with us. We can help uh, with, with your school change initiatives and your professional development needs. Uh, you can find us at edtechteam.com uh, and uh, on Twitter and Google Plus and Facebook now. We have a Facebook group. So uh, I, I hope to stay connected with you guys. Hope to see more of your triads online if you downloaded the, uh, downloaded the slide. And um, I'll leave you with this last quote from Larry Page. Always work hard on something uncomfortably exciting. <laughs> For what it's worth, it was mildly uncomfortably exciting to be sharing uh, ancient comfort poetry and wisdom with you guys today. So uh, hopefully that worked out. And uh, let's give away some prizes, uh, starting with the, uh, the rocket books. Yeah. Oh, you can give away some other stuff while I get them out. How's that? All right, does everybody have a blue ticket? Yeah, raise your hand if you don't have one. And Dan will scan you and get you a little... Yes, sir. All right, so uh, EdTech Team, we do professional development for Google and Apple. Uh, I don't know if you talked about that a little bit. What I think we did overview. Okay, okay. Topic. okay. So we also do EdTech Team Press, and we uh, have a lot of our speakers that have published books. So we have a couple books that we're going to give away. And then we also... Thanks, Mark. Um, and then we also have a Google Cardboard. We have some Magic Chain sunglasses. And then Mark really wants to give away these rocket books. Have you seen these things? Well, he's going to give you a much better explanation than I can. So let me first, uh, Mark, will you draw a number yes. and tell us what it is? Last three digits, probably. 882. Is there an 882? Yeah, all right. Yes. Russian oh, Russian Making school something special. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right, number 881. 881, who are you? Great job. You are getting Kevin Brookhauser's book called Code in Every Class, K-12. Awesome opportunities. Uh, the next one we're going to give out is Transforming Libraries, Toolkit for Innovators, Makers, and Seekers. I've read this one yeah. 871. 871? Hey, congratulations. You're all serving in the same spot. Good job. Uh, the next one is um, Richard Wells, A Learner's Paradise, and this is sort of how to house uh, reimagining education via a lens of what they've done in New Zealand. It's a fun read. All right. 872. 872. Mark, you need to mix those up. Oh, I swear it? I just did. <laughs> All right. 872, anybody? Nope. Okay, next one. 892. 892. Are you here? Hey, congratulations. Awesome. Next, Ed Tech Team Sunglasses. 893. Who's 
893, congratulations. Uh, a Google Cardboard. 888. 888. Yay, congratulations. And now Mark wants to tell you a little bit about this rocket book. All right, since we're talking inspiration, sort of bringing your analog life into the digital, that's kind of the idea behind these. You uh, you write on them, they come with a uh, special pen, and when you're done, you uh, scan it with your phone, and you can tell it where to go, Evernote or uh, Google Drive. You can put it to a specific, uh, specific folders in Google Drive. Uh, there's symbols at the bottom of the page. Depending on what symbol you check, that's what folder it goes into. It's really cool. So it's a great way to capture sketches, uh, to capture your notes. Uh, by the way, you can do hand-drawn slides. You draw them in your rocket book, upload them to Google Drive, and throw them into a slide deck. So really, really cool stuff. I even think like if a kid's got a Chromebook, they just need this on the side. Because how many teachers still do stuff on paper? You scan it, and now you've got it in your Chromebook. Um, the Everlast is a brand new model. They have another one called the Wave, which when you're done, you microwave it, and it erases the whole book. Kind of amazing. This one, though, uh, you erase page by page. So you, as soon as you get a couple pages in or whatever and you're ready to erase, you just uh, scan it and then uh, wipe it. It's pretty cool. So first racket book is going to number 891. No, 891. All right, the 879. All right. That's the executive size rocket book you just got. And then we uh, we have the uh, letter size rocket book. Going to, whoops, that's the same ticket. Going to 890. All right, well, thanks you all for, for being here. And uh, by the way, that was a you all. You all. But thank you all for being here. Um, we, uh, we hope to see more of you online and at our events or around the world. So stick around if you have questions and want to chat with the team. Next up in a couple minutes, we're going to have Sergio doing a presentation needs on permission. Google Classroom. We'll be next. Thanks, you guys. Your, your permission. Oh, you're right. And then will you tell everyone what your triad is? Oh, I don't have one. I don't have you're one. You're right no, now. No. <laughs> uh, mine is it's, it's six. It's great. It's sleep. permissions, it's yeah. Linux, yeah, exactly. and that's it. Permissions. Yeah, inspiration is copy docs. Yeah. Uh, crouton on, on your pixel and permissions. So here we go. Nice. All right, guys, we're going to go take a walk around. Let's see how we do. What? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. This is a, the teaching theater schedule. No, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, it's, um, is this program free for kids? Uh, we have some programs at the buy. All right, guys, we are going to go for a walk because we're looking for the EdTech karaoke stand um, to pick up a pass, but um, we'll walk around. If I go out, I'll try to come back in. Let's see. So talk to, Let's see uh, what we have here. Looks like some three D printing stuff.
<laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, what's the number one thing they can do with Pear Deck? What, what should they? So what Pear Deck's an app for engaging all of your students every question instead of just calling in a few students and leaving some left. All of them every day. And we're back. This is Flow Vocabulary, hip hop in the classroom. If anyone sees that, keep in on this guy. Uh, that's a part of grammar and speech. It's something you should know, right? <laughs> and that's music, right? That's how powerful music is to learning. We're taking that entire concept and the fact that you can call that information so quickly and so authentically through every single core subject across the curriculum. So, the language arts, math, science, studies, life skills, vocabulary. I don't want to we're talking about.
So instead, what I would do is I'm going to create a folder, and I'm going to set that folder any one of Lake can view. We'll call it Momentum Unit Resources, and I'm going to put that on the About page. So anytime I make something new, something with long-term value, like I said, like a practice quiz, I'm going to put it in the resource folder now, and students can constantly retrieve all those things. When we do staff PD at my school, right? I was a high school coach for a little while, and we had a Google Classroom page, and we just had a folder with all the resources from the whole year's worth of PD. So they can go in there and grab it. And all they had to do is go on the PD Google Classroom, go to the resource folder, and find what they were looking for. Maybe it was a lesson template, whatever. But I like the idea of having it all in one place. And so on, let's see if you have one. There you go. So this is a link to some of these resources, describing some of these processes with YouTube videos that show how I set them up. Right? A shared resource folder on the About page, that's a link of video to how to set up that process that I just showed you. And that's edtech.team slash GC Pro Tips, Google Classroom Pro Tips. Oh my goodness, it's so sad. It's okay. Here's a walkthrough of sending the uh, daily agenda, the announcements. That's kind of re-describing it right here. Let's see if we can get this guy right here. Oh my goodness, I'm missing all of my cool features. It's okay. I'm going to uh, switch gears now because I can't show you some of my classroom things. But I, wa I want you guys to know, I mentioned having a student shared folder shared folder between me and each of you. 